Hello everyone, and welcome to A New Day with Altanya. This episode is not just another episode of A New Day. It is our final episode in the Ten Commandments series. The completion of this series marks the first completion of any of the series. The journey to the end was fraught with life-changing decisions that it seemed as though I was on a permanent hiatus. I'm grateful to God for his immutable power and resources, his love and his mercy and his never-ending goodness that continues to run after me. So much so that I am able to not only complete this series, but also to publish book one of the Single and Waiting for God series, The Journey Begins. That's me. I'm so excited and so proud of myself. I finally did it. Without further ado, let's get started. What was the second sin that was committed on earth? Well, what was the first sin? Let's go back to the Garden of Eden where a beautiful flying snake is having a conversation with the mother of all mothers and non-mothers, the lady Eve. Eve was discussing with the serpent God's rule about the tree in the midst of the garden. Genesis 3 verses 2 to 4 reads, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. And that's a lie. What was the first sin? The snake feeding false information to Eve. On to the second sin. As the conversation went, after the serpent told Eve, you will not surely die, then came the temptation Genesis 3 verses 5 and 6. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. What was the second sin? The woman lusted after the fruit. She saw that it was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. The third sin, the woman lusted after God or the ability of God to know good and evil. She was desiring to be like God. The fourth sin, the one that brought forth the downfall of man, was committed by our forefather, Adam, who broke the first commandment when he placed Eve before God, thereby making her an idol and ate the fruit from her that God said not to eat. All of the lusting that we do, all the desires that we have, if left unchecked, can open Pandora's box with the word covetousness written across it. Covetousness is an eager or excessive desire, especially for wealth or possessions. I'll add to that a strong desire to have that which belongs 
to another. Covetousness is considered to be a very serious offense in scripture. The 10th commandment in Exodus chapter 20 verse 17 reads, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. This commandment may be the last one, but it is certainly not the least. When we consider our sins, it will become apparent to us that the root cause of most of our sins, if not 99.9% .9 of it, is covetousness. Let's look at the commandments one at a time and see how covetousness played a role. Commandment number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Commandment number two, you shall not make for yourself an idol. Why would we place someone or something before God? Anything we are unwilling to part with can become a God or an idol for us. What are some things that some of us are unwilling to part with for God? Spouses, money, our jobs, how about jewelry or television? For some of us, video games. All of these can be a God for us. But how does it relate to covetousness? Why must we have the video game? Because everyone else has one. Why must we go to work instead of church? because we're trying to make money to get that something that we want because someone else has one. Anything you place before God becomes an idol. While we may not physically bow down to them, we worship them by allowing them to usurp the position of God in our lives, thereby breaking the first and the second commandment. Commandment number three, you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. In other words, do not take the Lord's name in vain. This commandment can certainly be broken without the involvement of one's covetousness. Some of us have simply grown accustomed to saying the Lord's name in vain. It comes out of our mouths without thought. Commandment number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. As discussed above with the first and second commandments, we ignore the day of worship as set forth by God in order to make more money to get that something that everyone else has or to be a part of something to participate in an event because everyone's going to be there. Commandment number five, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. Commandment six, you shall not murder. Commandment seven, you shall not commit adultery. Commandment eight, you shall not steal. Commandment nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. For commandments five through nine, consider this. When we kill, lie, cheat on our spouses, and steal from each other, we are ultimately going against the precepts we were taught by our parents. We go against these precepts when we are carried away 
by our own lust, our own greed. The internet is the new communication highway. Everyone has a cell phone. The poor farmers in the remote areas of third world countries have cell phones. Every time we look at our cell phones, there's a push notification from one of the social media platforms that we follow. While it is nice to learn about others and see what others are doing in real time, for the most part, having that ability through social media often encourages us to compare ourselves to others, inspiring insecurity in some and in others, covetousness. In the New Testament, Paul reminded the Ephesians that they should be followers of God and that there were some human qualities that should not be named among them. In Ephesians 5.3, Paul wrote, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. As we manifest the character of God, we must duly be careful not to besmirch God's character either. When we continue on to verse 5, we see again how this last commandment incorporates the other commandments. Paul wrote in Ephesians 5, 5, For this you know, that no fornicator, commandment 7, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, commandment 1 and 2, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So not only should these qualities not be named among us, Paul is saying that those who practice these traits will have no place in heaven. This is serious. To repeat, for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. In Luke 12 and verse 15, we are reminded to take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Matthew 16 and verse 26 asks the question, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What would be the point of living for Jesus if we did not put our all into it? The consequences are too grave to allow the evil one to instill in us the obsession for the excessive want of things. As human beings, we have a very bad habit of judging success by comparison. Contemporary coveting is expressed when we sit down and analyze whether or not or how much we were able to keep up with the Joneses. Comparing ourselves to others often ends in dissatisfaction and a lack of contentment with what we have. Proverbs 15 and verse 16 reads, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Coveting that which belongs to another is synonymous to saying to God, you care more about that person than you care about me, which is synonymous with accusing God of being unfair in his treatment of us. Colossians 3 and verse 5 states, Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Covetousness, the excessive desire for wealth 
or possessions in general, or those belonging to another, is basic to the commandments against murder, adultery, stealing, and lying. Examples may be found throughout the Old and New Testaments. Ezekiel 22 verse 12, those who extort and accept bribes are coveted, and these may lead to murder. Matthew 5 verse 27 and 28, lusting after another's spouse is synonymous to adultery. This can also lead to murder. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Recall the story of King David and Bathsheba. First, King David lusted after Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, a loyal servant and soldier to the king. Then he committed adultery with her. Next, he tried to manipulate Uriah into also sleeping with his wife in case there were any consequences to their disloyal actions. Finally, he ordered Joab to make certain that Uriah dies in battle. Joshua 7 and verse 21, when Achan saw the spoils of war, of which they were instructed not to take, Achan said to Joshua, I coveted them and took them. This led to the death of every human and animal connected to Achan. Ephesians 5, 5, no covetous man will inherit the kingdom. 2 Kings 5, verses 22 to 25. Gehazi's greed caused him to lie to his master, Elisha, and to Naaman. In the end, he became a leper. How do we overcome this negative character trait? 1 Timothy 6, verses 6 to 10 states, But godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out and having food and raiment let us be there with content but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The cure for covetousness godliness, and contentment. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 8 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Another cure for covetousness, be joyful, pray continually, and be thankful. Covetousness kills contentment, joy, and peace. God is greatly displeased with the least manifestation of selfishness on the part of his professed people for whom Jesus gave his life. Rather than being selfish, we should be benevolent. We should strive to do good to one another at every opportunity. In this way, we will cherish the principles of heaven. Let our lives be like that of Christ, the perfect pattern whose life was without selfish interest and continually marked with 
benevolence. Thank you once again for joining me today on A New Day. Until we meet again, no matter what has transpired today, make tomorrow and every day your new day.